Hello, my name is Madison LeBlanc and this is project number three for my Astronomy 101 class. And today I'm going to be teaching you some more science. Except this time, as you probably guessed from my whole look today, I am going to be talking about reasons why we haven't made contact with aliens yet. In our observable universe, there are about 100 billion galaxies, each with 100 to 1,000 billion stars. And based on what we've learned about planets, there are probably trillions and trillions of habitable ones out there. So, to ask the question in the words of Nobel Prize winning physicist Enrico Fermi, where is everybody? Why haven't we encountered any evidence for extraterrestrial life? With so many potential places for it to arise, it might seem incredibly strange that we haven't found it, or that it hasn't found us. This troubling question is known as the Fermi Paradox. And in his recent book, End Times, science writer Brian Walsh discusses 13 theories as to why we've yet to make contact with aliens and why we might never do so. Now, 13 is a hell of a lot of theories to squish into the six minutes I'm allocated for this project, so try to keep up. When Fermi first asked his famous question, no Earth-like planets outside of our own solar system had been confirmed to exist yet. The first ever exoplanet was discovered in 1995 and Fermi died back in the 50s. Today, powerful space telescopes are changing our understanding of the cosmos. NASA's planet-hunting Kepler Space Telescope, which launched in 2009, discovered more than 2,000 exoplanets by the time it retired in 2018. More than 50 of the exoplanets Kepler found were deemed potentially habitable, meaning they fall within what's known as the Goldilocks zone of their respective star. In 2013, astronomers reported that based on Kepler data, there could be up to 40 billion planets comparable in size to Earth that exist within these favorable Goldilocks zones. Even if just 0.01% of those Earth-like planets were able to host life, that would still equate to 40 billion planets. Also, the chances that our telescopes would happen to coincidentally be pointed at the exact right place in space at the exact right time to detect extraterrestrial civilization would be infinitesimal. Big word. I know. So scientists from the SETI, also known as Search for the Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute, let's just abbreviate that as SETI, point radio telescopes at portions of the sky to collect data. The researchers analyze that information for unusual patterns that might indicate an intentional or accidental transmission from an intelligent civilization. Also, SETI's monitoring system is predicated on the idea that aliens are trying to message us. We just need to hear it. Astrophysicist Frank Drake created an equation in 1961, now known as the Drake Equation, that offers a new way to calculate an estimated number of technologically advanced civilizations in the Milky Way. The equation is made up of seven variables that, when multiplied together, yield a calculation of the possibility that humanity might someday hear from an intelligent alien civilization. The problem is that we don't know the value of many of the Drake equation variables with any degree of certainty. Scientists have a good handle on the first three, the rate of star formation, the number of stars with planets, and the number of planets within those stars' Goldilocks zones. But the rest are still a mystery. Basically, the simplest answer to the Fermi paradox is perhaps Earth holds the only intelligent life in the entire universe. I find that really hard to believe. Now, another possibility would be that aliens want to talk to us, but they just can't. SETI assumes that any extraterrestrials we might come into contact with would be more technologically advanced than we are, given the relatively short time humans have existed. So it's possible that aliens don't use radio waves as a means to communicate. They could be reaching out to us using a technology that we don't know about yet. Walsh compared the situation to one in which modern humans would try to chat with a caveman on a cell phone. And in this analogy, we're the cavemen. Another possibility would be that maybe our radio waves just haven't reached anybody yet. Frank Drake sent out the first deliberate interstellar radio message on November 16, 1974. 168 seconds of a two-tone sound were beamed towards the star system Messier 13 in the Hercules constellation. But M13 is roughly 21,000 light years away, according to SETI. So Drake's message will take about the same number of years to get there. Then it would take any similar return signal the same amount of time to get back to us. And another fun fact is that not all scientists thought sending random messages into space would be a good idea. Astrophysicist Stephen Hawking cautioned against attempting to make contact in 2010. Hawking told the Times of London, quote, I imagine they might exist in massive ships, having used up all the resources from their home planet. 
Such advanced aliens would perhaps become nomads, looking to conquer and colonize whatever planets they can reach. And based on the track us humans have been going, that sounds a little familiar. Another theory is that aliens could be deliberately hiding from us. Some researchers believe that intelligent life in the galaxy may have the same concerns that Hawking did about making contact. So they're probably just choosing to remain silent in order to protect themselves. Another theory is that aliens could just be leaving us alone until we become too greedy and pose a threat to the universe. The 1951 Hollywood blockbuster, The Day the Earth Stood Still, explores such a theory. And I am so happy to talk about this because my major is film and television, so right now we have science and my major combining. In the film, an alien spaceship lands in Washington, D.C. to deliver a message. Live peacefully or be destroyed as a danger to other planets. And another theory that Walsh suggests would be that maybe the aliens are just hibernating. Another hypothesis is that we might be living in the quote, galactic sticks, just outside of where intelligent life might be residing within the Milky Way. Walsh explores the idea that it may just be hard to reach us way out here, especially if other intelligent civilizations have, like us, not yet figured out an efficient way to travel between star systems. But that particular answer to the Fermi paradox has a problem. The Milky Way is old. Even if aliens were only traveling at one-tenth the speed of light, it would take them 10 million years to cross the entire Milky Way. And that's less than 1% the age of the entire galaxy. Or maybe, perhaps, a technologically advanced civilization just wouldn't be able to survive long enough to be able to travel through the galaxy for millions of years. Intelligent civilizations could exist in other parts of the Milky Way, but they die out or destroy themselves before they're able to find us or we're able to contact them. Some scientists have even argued that intelligent civilizations similar to ours could have gone extinct because of the same issues that threaten humanity here on Earth. Finally, one of the most recent responses to the Fermi Paradox is that aliens have already visited Earth, just not recent enough for us to have noticed. Now, I'm sorry if I butchered this name, but Didier Quelos, a physicist from the University of Cambridge, was named a co-winner of the Nobel Prize in Physics recently for his discovery of the first exoplanet orbiting a sun-like star. Quelos calls himself the Planet Hunter, and following the award ceremony, he said that his research has left him fully convinced that humans will make contact with aliens within the next 100 years. And finally, my name is Madison LeBlanc, and that was my presentation on reasons why we haven't made contact with aliens yet. I learned a couple of cool things, and I hope you did too, and if you don't believe in aliens, well, I hope this made you second-guess yourself, because I mean, come on, we're a tiny speck in the middle of nothingness. Like, there's gotta be, there just, there's just gotta be something else out there. Ah. Uh, anyways, um, take me to your leader, I guess. Bye!